Don't worry about him. He was just here. We'll run into him any minute now, I'm sure of it. Don't think about it, please. <laughs> Damn it. Where did everyone go? Huh? What? Look. Roy, look! The hallway. It, it can't be. The corridor. It grew. What is... No, no, the other way. Look. Down the hall. Something's... Uh, something's coming. What? After Mitsuki's encounter with Tokiko, one of the child spirits that roams Heavenly Host, she frantically enters the second wing. Here she briefly comes across Satoshi and Yuka, who observe her panicked behavior. They attempt to talk to her, but Mitsuki's anxiety of seeing her friends murdered get the better of her. Later, after being separated from her older brother, Yuka finds Morishik taking pictures of Mitsuki's corpse. Her eyes have a hollowed appearance to them, yet still retain a tiny echo of life and reflect a palpable sense of terror. It almost seems as if she could snap out of it at any moment, stand up, and walk away. The corpse is so fresh. Simply being in its presence is disquieting. Yuka then runs into Kizami, who coincidentally is also in search of a sibling. Kizami offers his assistance in search for Satoshi. They then go off to search for their missing kin together. As they both observe Mitsuki's corpse, Kizami warns Yuka that there are ghostly children roaming the halls along with a large man who wields a hammer. It seems many of Kizami's friends have succumbed to these wrathful spirits. <laughs> Kizami? Kizami, is it really you? Kursaki, you're alive. You too. Man, how you a sight for sore eyes. Finally, someone else who isn't dead. Godforsaken place that this is. I, I was at my wit's end just now, let me tell you. Outside of this school, there's nothing but trees, as far as the eye can see. I thought about braving the wilderness, but it seems like one of those forests of the lost you see in the video games. Once you enter, you can never leave. So what the hell is this place anyway? Damn it all. There are actual, honest to goodness ghosts in here, you know? I think we may be stuck here for good. There's no way out. For any of us. Did you see... 
Mitsuki in the next room. She's dead. Yeah, I saw. I just don't know how to handle this. I feel like there's a certain number. A certain number of dead bodies a person's expected to see within his lifetime. And I swear, in the last hour alone, I think I've far surpassed my quota. Ah! Just yesterday, Miski dumped her boyfriend after finding out he was cheating on her with three other women. She's been really down about it all morning. So I sent her stupid text messages during class to cheer her up. She seemed mad about it during study hall, but then she sent me a thank you message the very next period. I think I was actually able to lift her spirits a little. Now, though, she's gone. Killed by actual spirits. I guess it was those children. Kizami, what are you doing? Within these walls, it doesn't matter if you're killed by them or killed by me. Either way, you're dead. Kai's skeletal remains are found in the main hallway of Heavenly Host, alongside his two classmates. He bled out from being sliced with an edged weapon. He can still be heard muttering his assailant's name, Kizami. Okawa's corpse is also found next to his classmates. His cause of death was also being sliced up, just like Kai's. He additionally calls out Kizami's name. Fukuroi's body is the final Byakuden student found in the main hallway. He was struck with a blunt instrument by Yoshikazu, whose signature weapon is a sledgehammer. He was then stabbed by Kizami with a sharp weapon, causing him to eventually bleed out. He, too, cries Kizami's name. Karayama's remains are found in the east staircase leading to the third floor. He was pushed down a flight of stairs by Kizami, causing him to suffer a compound fracture. As a result, he bled out. Kizami. Oh, hi. Does this mean I get to ask her on a date now? Huh? How'd you get that line? That was never an option when I played. But of course. I'm Katayama, the sommelier of love. Feel free to call me that too, if you'd like. I don't think you're the cock of the walk just yet. Try clearing the game once, then we'll talk. Oh, don't worry. I'll clear the shit out of it. I appreciate that you're getting into your little game over there, but I hope you haven't forgotten that this is a student council room. Of course, we haven't forgotten. Yeah, don't worry. We do this all the time. We're just messing around. It's totally harmless. Yep, just let us know when you're done in here, Masato, and we'll all head home. <sighs> you know. Ah, Ryusuke, what the hell? Are you seriously planning on two-timing her? <laughs> There's plenty of me to go around. And boom goes the dynamite. Oh god, I can't believe you just did that! What up, boys? Come on, why can't you just pick your favorite like a normal player? Hmm... What's all the hubbub? My one in. They're playing a stupid dating sim. <laughs> oh, gaming, are you? You guys just can't seem to get enough. Did I detect a hint of dual entendre there? You bastard. Maybe. I mean, you know, those kinds of games. Don't knock until you tried them. <laughs> you think you can win me over? Well, how about you see for yourself? Whoa. Damn. She is super cute. 
Isn't she? Oh, get a load of the graphics on this thing. Super realistic. Hey, you know who I'd love to see playing this? Fukuroi. That would be something. fu ku do i This game is pretty good stuff. Why not come over to where the cool kids are hanging out and give it a whirl? Uh, well, I've got work to do, you know? Eh, uh, don't be such a stick in the mud. Come on, Fukuroi. Just pick your favorite girl. I insist. In fact, I won't leave you alone until you do. You guys are such pains in my ass. That one's real purdy. <laughs> and look at her. She's so tiny. Oh man, and that one's got huge boobs. Whoa, that was a pretty quick decision. See big boobs, press confirm. Fukuroi, I had no idea. <laughs> big tits does it for you, eh? Keep your voice down, God. And the truth comes out, but it's okay. I can definitely see it. Yeah, good choice, man. <sighs> A person's true colors always come out when they play games like this. They seem like some pretty predictable colors for a hard ass like him, though. Shut up. <laughs> no need to be embarrassed. Toko committed suicide. She cut her own tongue out with scissors and choked on it. She can be found in the second floor east hallway of the main building. Toko can have an encounter with Satoshi in a wrong end. She appears to be badly beaten, presumably by Kizami. She tells Satoshi that Kizami was in fact the one who pushed Karayama down the stairs, causing his death. This is the initial incident that tears the Byakuden students apart. Toko cracks under the pressure of trusting others and tells Satoshi to get away. After some time, Satoshi comes back to Toko, who seemingly lost her mind. She pulls out a pair of scissors and stabs Satoshi, causing his death. shaking. What's the matter? You really are shaking. Uh, may I ask what your sister is like? Oh, certainly. She's a very cute little girl, quite small but with great big eyes. I see. Her hair is short and she's in junior high school. And as I recall, she was always wearing a blue smock. Huh? <laughs> uh, I, I think I'll be okay on my own. I, I'll look for my big brother by myself. What are you saying, Yuka? I am your big brother. You're my little sister. And there's simply no way out of here. Everyone is going to die. So let's continue to be brother and sister until our dying breaths, for however long we may have. Uh, goodbye! from here right now hurry but if we don't do anything about your injuries you're going to die uh, I, I'll, I'll just apply pressure okay stay with me no please just go uh, kurosaki who on earth could have done this to you 
That's for not listening to your big brother, Yuko. <laughs> She's going into convulsions. Kizami, I'm sorry. Pardon? I should have done more to stop you when we were kids. I'm your best friend after all, but I never filled that role very well. I never did the things I should have. What are you going on about? Have you really deluded yourself into thinking you're my best friend? I don't recall you ever standing up for me, not one time! <laughs> yeah, I... <coughs> I guess I really haven't been a very good friend. <laughs> well, you won't be regretting that for long, but I must say, I am rather curious about these things you should have done as my so-called best friend. Please, do enlighten me. Oh, I don't know. Maybe something like this? <coughs> that really hurts, you know? Stop blaming other people for everything, you fucking coward! <coughs> you son of a bitch. Take a good look around you, Kazami. Take a good look at who you're up against. No one is conspiring against you. We're no threat. We're your friends. <laughs> That's bullshit, and you know it. You're the fucking coward, Kurosaki. Back to your senses, are you, Yuka? Everything is just fine now. Your big brother will protect you. Your big, strong brother will make sure to keep you safe. <laughs>